So earlier in the 2K24 cycle, I did do a Seattle Supersonics expansion rebuild. Let's do the other team that's most likely to be an expansion team when the NBA does expand a Las Vegas team. So I did put it where every team can protect up to 10 players. So the expansion draft should not be with a ton of good players. Well, Bruce Brown's going to be in it. I guess I get that. Like this is a deep Pacers team and due to contracts and young players. All right. This isn't the craziest one. Nansen Zeller. That's cool. I feel like there's going to be one uh, Gary Trent. All right. I feel like they'd keep him over like Jalen McDaniels for sure. Like Yusuf Nurkic, not protected. That's an interesting one, I guess, due to the contract of Isaiah Joe, Mike Conley, Kyle Anderson. So let's just see what the expansion draft looks like. The Supersonics get the number one pick, and they ended up taking Zach Levine. What? All right, I would have loved that. Why do I feel like Zach Levine? No, I don't, I don't know if he's from Seattle. Um, But yeah, the Las Vegas Aces. We could take Clay Thompson, Tobias Harris, DeAndre Hunter, Fultz, Dinwiddie. All right, yeah, so there were some good players. I can't believe the Warriors selected 10 other players over Clay Thompson. What are you doing, Golden State? So I feel like I got to take Clay with my number one overall pick. And let's just solidify the backcourt. Let's, mm, I kind of want him, but like DeAndre Hunter might not be a bad addition. Fultz will be a free agent. They just took Levine. I feel like they'll take Hunter. Ah, do I want Fultz or do I want Hunter? Both are 25 year olds, 81 overalls. Fultz is from the 2017 draft. Hunter's from the 2019 draft. Huh. I guess Hunter was just, yeah, a little bit older coming out of college out of Virginia. He's under contract. You know what? We'll take Fultz here. Another one year deal. What are the odds? Okay, it goes to buy his hairs. Don't take DeAndre Hunter. All right, and they take Hunter. Uh, I could have ended up with Tyus Jones and DeAndre Hunter. Just kind of looking back on it, that's probably what I should have done. I could opt for Buddy Heald, but I'm going to take Bruce Brown. He's a little bit younger, and I feel like we just get his bird rights in a year from now. I'm going to get Brandon Clark, too, just as basically my starting center. Want him over Nurkic just because of the contract. Then there goes Tyus Jones. Man, I think the Supersonics are definitely drafting a better team than me. I'm going to take Ruby Hashimori. He's still on the younger side, and he's got a solid tradable contract if needed. Josh Green wasn't kept from the Dallas Mavericks. Hell yeah, that is actually a fantastic addition for us. Gordon Hayward and Kelly Olenek go next. We're going to take KCP, who I feel like I definitely can flip for a draft pick at the deadline. And we're going to take Isaiah Hardenstein to be the backup center behind Brandon Clark. Then there goes Spencer Dinwiddie. We're going to end up with Sidney Sissoko from the San Antonio Spurs. And then Isaiah Joe from the OKC Thunder. Oh, that's a fantastic pick. He's killing it in real life. Marcus Sasser goes and then Mike Conley. I'm going to take Kobe Brown from the LA Clippers and then pair him up with Gary Trent Jr. Who's also on a one-year deal. Yeah, so I have a lot of good one-year deal players. I'm going to take a flyer on Peyton Pritchard to be my backup point guard behind Markel Fultz. And like Pritchard is off to a rough start in real life, but hey, we could try to develop him here. And with my final pick, I'm going to take Hami Hawkes out of, I guess, UCLA and the Miami Heat. And then Chris Murray was the next pick. So yeah, that is the expansion draft for you. Let's get this going. All right, so we have a pretty deep team to start off the season. I do feel like we would be like a team to end up making some midseason trades for sure at the deadline. We have Jake Thomas as our head coach. I'm sure Milan Mack is over there on the Supersonics. And yes, that is the case. So first two games of the season against the Suns and we go back to back to start off the year what brutal schedule making is that we ended up losing one and then winning one brandon clark at 24 and 9 in the second game of the year all right we would take that third game of the year against the magic we was in a good defensive matchup we ended up losing though 88 to 82 they came back in the fourth quarter and then we ended up beating the rockets by 17 so a nice win here in game two of the season i mean clay could be a guy we could move at the deadline for sure and i mean if we just look at our salary cap breakdown at the moment i mean a lot of players we drafted teams didn't probably want to keep due to the money they were making but there's a good chance we can clear up 65 100 million with just the top four guys potentially being free agents at the end of the year. I don't think KCP would opt out, but we'd be clearing up basically another 9 million. Yeah, we'd clear up about 110 million this offseason with basically just five guys hitting free agency. We ended up losing to the Magic here. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be an inconsistent first half. I'm sure we're going to be around 500 at the deadline. All right, so the Las Vegas, what are we, the Outlaws? Yeah, do not get any All-Stars here as we just had the All-Star Drift. Our leading scorer has been Clay Thompson, followed by Markel Fultz, Ruby Hashimura, Bruce Brown, Brandon Clark, uh, Josh Green, KCP, Gary Trent Jr., Isaiah Joe, etc. So we are actually six games above 500, which is a little bit better than I thought we would be currently at this point of the season. We do not have anybody sitting in the MVP or rookie or six man of the year race, neither Depoy, but most improved, we do have three guys there, Brandon Clark, Rui Hashimura, and Josh Green, obviously, because they have much larger roles. You're seeing DeAndre Hunter and shout out Jalen Johnson as well, who is also here. We are six games above 500, like I just mentioned. So I don't know if I'm going to be a seller as much as I thought I would be. And I think I would like to bring back Clay Thompson, Washington State, 
It would maybe make more sense if he was on the Supersonics, but for us, you know, we're still, like, relatively close up there. Not really, uh, but at least, like, I don't know why I'm trying to push this uh, geographical, like, agenda here. We're just going to re-sign Clay three years, 60 million. It'll go up a little bit. We're going to get him to his age 36 season, but that is going to be a nice re-signing for us as he is probably going to mean a top three guy on the team. We are also going to do the same with Markel Fultz. We're going to throw a team option on the last year. It's a good tradable salary if he needs to get moved eventually, but yeah, Four years, $60 million. So yeah, we're taking on four years in that contract. And I'm going to give Gary Trent Jr. a two-year extension worth around $12 million a year as well. So I don't think I'm actually going to make any trades at the deadline since I re-signed some guys. I couldn't really find a deal for Bruce Brown that made sense. Probably going to decline his team option come offseason time, but I just wasn't going to get anything in return that I really wanted. And I was going to have to take on an additional salary down the line, and I kind of wanted a cleaner cap sheet. I already re-signed Clay and Fultz. At least the backcourt is coming back. But yeah, we saved around like $15 million on Clay's new contract, and we actually saved around $2 million on Fultz's new contract as well for just opening money. Yeah, we're not doing great past the All-Star break. We are currently 29-28. and 28. Two games above 500 now. Maybe I'm wishing I sold a little bit more, but I think if we make the playing tournament, that's a fine year one. All right, so Luka Doncic wins MVP for the Dallas Mavericks. Victor Wombanyama is your rookie of the year, so just Texas winning a couple awards to start this off. Brandon Clark takes on most improved, so hey, we got some award. Tibbs is your coach of the year. So I'm seeing no Outlaws or Supersonics win any awards as we ended the season as the 18th so we will be playing in the playing tournament we're going up against the dallas mavericks our point per game leader was clay thompson followed by markel falto at 16 and a half points and five and a half assists we had Rui Hashimura at 13 points at 5.7 rebounds there's bruce brown at 11.7 points 4.1 rebounds and three assists a night this would, I think, be an upset. Yeah, beating Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving in Dallas. Maybe this is going to be a complete Josh Green revenge game after they didn't protect him. But we are currently down by 37 points. So I don't think we're advancing out of this part of the playing tournament. We will get another game since we're playing in the 7-8 game. Oh, we just lost by 50. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Clay. I, I actually did regret maybe re-signing Clay after I did it. But I hope he doesn't prove me wrong. Obviously, we could still move him if we wanted to. I mean, that's I'm like not against that. We're taking on Phoenix. Hey, maybe Clay's about to drop 40 for me, and we're gonna advance to the playoffs in just year one. I mean, this is definitely a more competitive game than the Mavericks won. And we are actually gonna beat the Suns. We end up winning by 23 points. Rui Hashimura drops 30 in 29 minutes. Clay with 26, Fultz with 18, Brown and Joe combined for 32, and we advance to the playoffs as the eight seed. Oh, also, I moved the Memphis Grizzlies to the Central Division, and funny enough, they are the one seed. The Pelicans, the other team I thought about switching to the East, ends up as the one seed in the West. Are we able to maybe at least win one game? That would be the goal. We're down 2-0. Game one, we got... Oh my god, we lost by 39 points. Game two, we lost by 15. All right, well, it's getting better. Game three, we ended up winning. There we go. We ended up winning by six. Bruce Brown was our winning scorer. Gary Trent had 18 points in 16 minutes. Clark and Hashimura come on for 33. Can we tie it up? Yes, we can. We end up winning by 13 in this one. I mean, we may just have a deeper roster than this Pelican squad. Can we go up 3-2? to two? We cannot. They end up beating us by 25. And then here we go, game number six. We forced a game seven. Let's go, man. Just in year one, we were able to do that. Clay Thompson with 28, Hashimura, and Bruce Brown combined for 35. Are we able to beat them? Game seven of round one of the 2024 playoffs, the first year of the Vegas expansion team. It was somewhat competitive. I mean, they're pulling away in the third, the Pels. I mean, only up by seven. Hashimura, man, this guy comes up clutch for us in these meaningful games. Are we able to pull off the upset of the century? Nah, they're going to pull away here in the fourth. We end up losing by 13 points. 115 at 102. Hashimura had 17. Yeah, this team definitely could package some of these role players or just some of the depth that we have to really upgrade at certain positions. You have the Sixers and Lakers in the finals, and the Lakers win in six with LeBron being your finals MVP. So LeBron does not retire. He's staying in the league after he just won the NBA Finals. Russ, though, is heading to the Hall of Fame. He retires and gets his jersey retired by the Thunder. So the Supersonics may get a top 10 pick in this draft. We're obviously going to be outside the lottery. And the Supersonics end up going from 6th to number 1. Well, lucky them. We end up with the 19th pick because we did end up making the playoffs. We would have been around like 16 or 15. So I'm okay with making the playoffs and getting that experience. Go to a game 7 in round 1. So I feel like I should keep Jake Thomas around because I think he did a fine job as our head coach. I'm going to see if I can pick up like Wes Unseld as an assistant. And boom, there we go. All right, so I'm going to make this trade with the Philadelphia 76ers with Isaiah Hardenstein being a free agent. We're going to pick up B-Ball Paul. We also get Naw in this trade as well. We're giving them Josh Green and Hame Hake. So they agree to that. Trade negotiation difficulties on 80. So it's going to be a little bit challenging to upgrade this team via the trade market. I'm hoping a really good player falls to us at number 19. Isaiah Collier stays on the West Coast. He goes from USC Southern California all the way up north to Seattle. Matas Buzuelos goes to the Washington Wizards. DJ 
Wagner to the Rockets. And at number 19, we're getting Zachary Sasher there out of France. He's a top EuroLeague prospect coming over into the 2024 NBA draft. We're able to snag Robert Dillingham in the second, which is an absolute steal for us. I was also thinking about taking a Day Mara who is still on the board. How far did he fall after? Wow, he fell 23rd to the Cavs. What a selection by them. I mean, we could possibly look to trade for Jared Allen. So let's sign Rich Satcher. Let's sign Robert Dillingham. We got team player options. Bruce Brown going to decline that. I think I may look to move KCP and maybe Isaiah Joe as well. Since we do have a solid amount of wings and I just drafted one with the 19th overall selection and both KCP and Isaiah Joe are going to be free agents next year. So I'm going to snag Houston's unprotected first. Let's hope they are bad, even though they just drafted third overall and they have a good young core and Larry Nance Jr. from the Thunder just get another big man I'm giving them KCP and they get back Isaiah Joe who they didn't protect in the expansion draft so we have about 20 million dollars in cap space if I do want to use it I think I'm fine with the point guard duo I think we're fine on the perimeter uh, I think I want to give this team maybe one more shot because we do have guys under contract at least for the time being like how many free agents do we have next year just Nikhil Alexander Walker and Larry Nance Jr. two former Pelicans but yeah I think we're kind of chilling with that so I'm not really going to go out and spend too much even though i'd love emmanuel quickly on this team i mean let's see if we could sign quickly i think if i'm able to sign quickly to a similar deal that Fultz gets i think i would look to trade Fultz. but let's see would they match it if i renounce the rights on brown and harnstein and we get iq all right so yeah i think i'm actually gonna look to trade markel Fultz now i do get him in a ton of expansion rebuilds because he's never kept for some reason and i'm gonna send him to the utah jazz i have to take on jock londell's contract which i'll be able to trade next offseason we're getting minnesota's unprotected first on pick in 2025 makes sense coming from utah since they definitely need a point guard so yeah i'm excited to see what iq can do for this team i don't really get him too often in 2k or at least not in 2k24 so i'm definitely excited to see how he could progress for the las vegas outlaws so Chloe Thompson regresses. That's great now that he's kicking off a three-year, $64 million extension. Who knows? Maybe if we're not performing, I could just ship him off at the deadline if he at least has a good first half here in 2025, like this season. So I don't think Larry Nance or definitely not Jock Wandale are going to be in the rotation since I do have Clark and B-Ball Paul right now. So I'd like to see what Peyton Pritchard can do. And then who would get that last spot? I mean, maybe it will be Larry Nance for now. Like he'll get like 10 minutes. I think we're going to go about 14 to Pritchard. I think B-Ball Paul does not need 26. I think 20 is good with him. I think we can do like 26 to Gary Trent. I would like to see what our first round pick can do. He'll get like 27 minutes a night. We'll do 32 to Hashimura, 29 to Clark. Let's do 35 to Clay and quickly. You know, I got 12 more minutes, so let's give these. Do I want to play Sissoko or Kobe Brown? We'll see what Kobe Brown can do. System proficiency under Jay Thomas is two and a half star balance. First game of the season's on the road against Memphis. Brandon Clark revenge game. No, we ended up losing. Kelly Oubre was their leading scorer. Gary Trent had 29 points off the bench. Rissacher's NBA debut, nothing too crazy there. Quickly had 25 and 5. Clay at 18, 5, and 6. I mean, did we get worse this offseason? Possibly. I mean, maybe we're tanking for Cooper Flag at this point. Because obviously that would be a sick addition. We ended up losing by 17 to Dallas. Clay and Trent combined for 50. Those could probably be, and like quickly, the top three scores on the team. Clay posts 30 and 7 in game number three, quickly with 22 and 9. All right, so I'll see you guys while we hit the midseason mark. I don't know how good we're going to be. I think we maybe got a little bit worse this offseason, but I like the way this team is headed. Um, so yeah, there is a chance if we're below 500, I could look to maybe offload any expiring deals or think about a Clay Thompson trade, but we'll see. Maybe that won't even happen if we can pick up some wins. All right, so let's see if any outlaws make the all-star game in year two. I think the only one that had a good popularity chance would be Clay Thompson. That is not the case. We're a little bit worse this time around. We were 24 and 25. Last year, we were, what, 29 and 20 or 29 and 23 around there. So I do think I'm going to look to possibly sell at the deadline. I mean, it's going to be hard to tank for the number one overall pick if we've already won 24 games by February. All right, so yeah, at the deadline, exactly 500 at the moment. Luka Doncic leading the MVP race. Isaiah Collier, the number one overall pick for the Supersonics, leading the rookie of the year race. We do not see any outlaws. Shout out to Bones Highland, top of most improved. We got Emmanuel quickly as our leading scored 19 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, 6.3 assists. 47% from the field, 37 from three, 86 from the line. Yeah, he could be our franchise point guard for sure. Um, He's at an 83 overall. Klay Thompson still doing really well, but you know what? He's got two years after this year. He's really good like this year if you're trying to win a championship. I think I may look to offload him. Zachary Vesatcher could be a little bit more efficient for sure in his rookie year. I think Hashimura, I mean, he was so good for us in the playoffs the last year. Gary Trent, I mean, he's not as efficient as you'd want him to be. I think we may work the phones a little bit and see if we can make any moves. All right, we're going to see if we could trade him to San Antonio. He'd be a great floor spacer for Wimbanyama. We're going to be getting Trey Jones and Montrezl Harrell in this trade. Will they do it? 
Uh, it looks like they want my 2027 20, unprotected first. Don't we think that's a little much? Does two seconds get it done instead? Nope, they really want that first. Do I get off of the 2029 20, first to get off of Clay Thompson's contract? Honestly, we're going to do that. So I had to pass. Uh, man, attach a first round pick to Clay to get off his contract, which is kind of brutal if you think about it because he's still a solid player, but I think he may regress and I can possibly flip Trey Jones for a first round pick. So you know what? We're going to do this trade and we're going to send Trey Jones off to Cleveland for the minivan, Georges Niang, any 2029 20, Cleveland first. So there we go. I get a first round pick back and I should have no problem moving Niang's contract in the off season. And I think I'm going to do this trade with the Dallas Mavericks. Yep, because Rashawn Holmes is a free agent at the end of the year. So Gary Trent Jr. and our second in 2026 for Dallas's first rounder in 2029 and Rashawn Holmes. So I basically traded away my 2029 first round pick, but then I add the Cavs and the Mavs first. So I think we're chilling there. So I'm just hoping I see some improvement out of Zachary Rusasher. We got quickly still 25, Hashimura's 26. We're going to be able to make some moves in the offseason. So I'm okay losing a couple more games if that means I could possibly end up with like Ace Bailey or Cooper Flag. So Evan Mobley wins MVP. Isaiah Collier is your rookie of the year. Jaden Hardy, sixth man of the year. Mobley wins Depoy. Most improved goes to Scoot Henderson. In year number, what would this be? Two for him now? Yeah, I thought it was three for a second. And Anthony Edwards, clutch player of the year. So you got Mobley, Luka, Ja, Embiid, and Jokic on first team. Second team, you got Giannis, Shea, Lamelo, Cade, and Wemby. And then third team, you got Halliburton, Curry, Garland, Trey, and Tatum. Do we see any Vegas players? We do not. Oh, okay. We do get Zachary on all rookie second team. All right. You know what? His numbers weren't great this year, but it was his rookie year. They look like Kevin Knox rookie year numbers. So we did not make the playoffs, which is kind of what I was going for. We ended up 39 and 43. So if we do want to get Cooper flag, we'd have to get pretty lucky in the lottery. Emmanuel quickly ended up with 21 points, five rebounds and 6.3 assists on good efficiency. Would you look at that? Uh, Zach or Rui Hashimura was our number two score. Then the rookie, then you had Na Clark Reed. Yeah. Like we are going to have a decent amount of cap space. I plan on using it. Maybe we'll get in the trade market, but I think more of like a free agency destination and hopefully we can get some luck in the lottery. You have Halliburton versus Luca and the Mavericks win in six with Luca being your finals MVP. And LeBron James is retiring. He will be obviously heading to the Hall of Fame. I do feel like Kyle Lowry would make it as well. Here are your jersey retirements. Um, LeBron by three teams and Lowry by the Raptors. All right, so it is the draft lottery time. We are projected at number 12. Oh, number three as well. Wait, what was that Minnesota pick? Did I make a trade last year that I'm forgetting about? Yes, wait. Isn't that the Markel Fultz trade? I think it is the Markel Fultz trade. I got the Timberwolves 2025 first. Okay, well, here we go. I don't remember. I don't think there was a protection on it. All right, come on, 2K. Give me some luck here, please. All right, we end up at number five. Our pick also stayed at 12. So we have five and 12. I'm going to try my hardest with Houston to try to get the number one pick. All right, so let's see if I can possibly make a blockbuster move here. I would give you five and 12. Would the Rockets be willing to give me the rights to Cooper Flag? Oh boy. All right. Um, that trade value is kind of insane. I would give you Zachary Satcher, who's my number one pick last year. I would also give you Rui Hashimura at $18 million. Okay. Would they do this for number one? They do. Let's go. All right. I'm perfectly okay giving up all of that. We're going to keep Jake Thomas as our head coach. And welcome to the team, Cooper Flagg, who is projected to be the number one overall pick in 2025. And he's an 80 overall at the age of 19. Ace Bailey goes number two. The Rockets at number five took Ian Jackson. Still a very good selection. Dylan Harper, the pick after. So we got Cooper Flagg. Um, we're going to pick up the options on all of these guys. I could look to move all of them. We should have a little bit of cap space as well. All right, so I tried signing Donovan Mitchell. Unfortunately, he did not sign with us. We are going to pick up Kavon Mooney though. And we're going to ship off Jock Wandale and B-Ball Paul to the Jazz for a couple future first round picks. So let's sign Kavon Mooney. Anybody kind of switch up? Um, Kyrie goes to the 76ers. Okay. Yeah, there's really nobody I love here to really go and make a splash with. Like right now we have Quickly Pritchard. We have Dillingham. Sissoko, Flag. Yeah, I really sold everything for Flag, but we could have two max slots next year. We'll go full circle. Let's try to sign Isaiah Joe and see if we can pick up Oshea Igbaji as well. Maybe give him a team option next year. And do we get both of them? Let's go. All right, so this team is still kind of like building itself out. We, we have, I think, our franchise point guard. Could also play him at the two or be a really good six man. And we have our franchise player in Cooper Flag. All right, so this year is really all about Cooper Flag. We also picked up uh, Chris Dorte as well. But yeah, it's basically, going to be the quickly and Cooper flag season for sure. Like the bench isn't going to be great. Hey, we do have our first round pick at the end of the year. So I'm okay if this team isn't good. Like first game of the season at home against the Portland Trailblazers. We won by 16. <laughs> I mean, watch this team end up making the playoffs when I like, I don't think I'm supposed to. All right. We just blow out our first two opponents. 
Cooper Flag drops 39 in, or excuse me, 33 in his second career NBA game. Then we get blown out by the Thunder, but hey, I'll take this start to the year for sure. I thought like Cooper Flag was going to make the All-Star game in his rookie year. We're 17 games above 500. This doesn't make any sense. Can somebody explain it to me? This is by far our worst team yet, but just go out and draft Cooper Flag. This guy is going to be like helping you to be an All-Star team, basically. Even though we have no All-Star players, him and Quickly definitely could have made the All-Star game. Somehow, <laughs> this team is 17 games above 500. I do not get it. We're going to give Brandon Clark a two-year extension, six mil a year. Hell yeah. So I think I'm pretty much just going to say put at the trade deadline. Not going to make any moves. I guess we're going to make the playoffs. I thought I was going to have a top five pick in this draft. So Lamelo Ball wins MVP this season. Cooper Flag takes home the rookie of the year. He averaged 22 and a half points, 8.8 rebounds, and three assists as a rookie. Malik Monk, six man of the year. He's back in Charlotte. Well, I remember when he was a Hornet man. He was there for a little bit too, because he was obviously drafted by them. Wemby Depoy, Brandon Boston, most improved. Steph gets clutch player of the year, and coach of the year goes to Steve Clifford. John Moran is on all NBA second team. You got Giddy, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Victor Wembanyama, and Tyrese Halberton as well. No, I thought maybe Cooper Flagg would make an All-NBA team. Obviously, he's going to be on All-Rookie team. There's Ace Bailey on the Chicago Bulls. He looks pretty good still. So we were somehow the two seed in the Western Conference going up against the Utah Jazz in round one. Like, they have a better team than us, 100%. They're starting d over Fultz. So yeah, the third score was Isaiah Joe, who shot 37% from the field. Then there's Oshie Ogbaji, Mooney, Dorte Brown, Brandon Clark. Can we beat the Utah Jazz? I don't think we're better than this team, but we just sweep them. <laughs> I guess you put Cooper Flag on your team and then you're a cheat code. He averaged 24 and 12. It's basically him and quickly running the show. Isaiah Joe is garbage for us. But we're somehow four games away from the Western Conference Finals, taking on a Lakers team that no longer has LeBron James. And we sweep them. What? What? I wanted to be bad this year. I wanted to be bad. And we got Cooper Flag and quickly combining for 53 points. Isaiah Joe heard me. He was really good. Shout out Kobe Brown giving us meaningful minutes in the quarterfinals in year, what, three. I did not expect this whatsoever. We're taking on the OKC Thunder here in the Western Conference Finals. Once again, a better team than us. And it looks like uh, Clay Thompson and the Spurs with Wemby ended up losing in seven. How did Clay do this year? Yeah, you definitely saw the regression, but he was still really efficient. Obviously, he's not like the number one anymore like he was in Vegas because he's behind Wemby. So let's see. Can we beat the OKC Thunder in advance of the NBA Finals? <laughs> no. We sweep the first two rounds and then get swept in the conference finals. The Thunder beat the Sixers in seven and Shea Gilgis is your finals MVP. Chris Paul ends up retiring. I saw John Wall and Draymond as well. They just put Chris Paul in the Hall of Fame. All right, so do we have any draft lottery selections here? No, I do not see Vegas. Obviously, our pick is going to be probably in the 20s yeah we have 27 and we have houston's pick at 28 ah so yeah they were pretty good i thought that pick was going to be of good value thunder get number one after winning it all that's just the thunder way in 2k so i kind of want to keep jake thomas around this guy might be an absolute stud head coach shout out to him so peyton pritchard really hasn't done too much for us he was a good three-point shooter so i'm like debating if i want to move him because he's making 7.7 .7 million dollars but i don't know if i'm going to make any trades just yet so we're going to take alejandro ortiz here with our first first round pick a 610 center out of mexico and then we're going to take Derek. Aaron Holmes, a small forward out of Bradley. The number one overall pick was Cameron Boozer, the son of Carlos Boozer. He's like the projected number one pick. He also had Bryce James in this class as well, as he ended up going to the Spurs, Bryce James and Wemby. We would never hear the end of that from Bleacher Report and ESPN and NBA and the NBA overall. So even though Kobe Brown gave us meaningful minutes, he actually wasn't bad. I may pick that up. I'm going to decline that on Oshie Baji, but uh, there's maybe trades to be made. Luka Doncic is a free agent. There's a chance I could have Luka Doncic and Cooper Flagg on the same team together. This is a loaded free agency class, so I'm glad I waited. We can get the Kentucky teammates quickly and maxi together. I mean, Bancaro is sick, but he's restricted. So I'm obviously going to offer Luka the bag, the max, no trade clause player option. Would he sign with us? No, I think he's going to choose Minnesota. So I may wait. I mean, we could go after Triple J. We could also go after Mikel Bridges. And we get Bridges, so we do not get Luka. So I'm going to sign Mikel Bridges. It basically came out to like $31 million, $32 million a year. And Luka ends up going to the Timberwolves. He must have saw the Brazil Twitter account. All right, so uh, we have Mikel Bridges on the team. We could have another max contract. Like, we could sign Tyrese Maxey. I'm kind of in the market for a big man, and like Jalen Duran is yet to get a real contract. We could also pick up Walker Kessler. So I'm going to try to sign Jalen Duran, and I think, how did we not get him yet? He didn't get one real offer. I know he's not a great system fit right now, but he will be. And boom, three years, 96 million, basically the same contract as Mikel Bridges. And I'm going to trade Brandon Clark and a second rounder for Buddy Heald. He may regress. He might not even make the rotation, but we could just use another shooter than having uh, three centers because we already have... 
Ortiz, we have Looney, and we just signed Jalen Duran. We have Cooper Flagg and Kobe Brown at the four. We have Holmes and Bridges, Joe and Heald, and Quickly and Pritchard. I can't believe Luka chose the Timberwolves over going to Vegas. So Cooper Flagg is up to an 84 overall. Hey, we were just the two seed, and I also just added Mikel Bridges and Jalen Duran. Like, our defense just got so much better. So constructing the team, I think Joe will be the, yeah, will be the starting shooting guard. That is definitely going to be the starting five. I think Looney can get, like, 16 minutes a night. I think this is somewhat going to be the bench. So, like, Holmes and Ortiz, I think, will probably be in the G League. It could look something like that off the bench. I think I'm going to try to go like 35 to the big four. Uh, everybody we just signed. And honestly, let's do 37 to flag. Let's do 36 to quickly. 36 to Bridges, and then we could probably just do a couple more to Buddy Heald. System proficiency is balanced under Jake Thomas. Three stars. First game of the season is at home against the Suns, and oh my god, we just won by 58 points. Oh, <laughs> Cooper Flag with 31 and 11. Bridges with 21. 21 and 16 for Jalen Duran. Yeah. This could be a championship team this year for sure. Cooper Flag may just be him already. All right, so we just had the all-star draft, and Cooper Flag is an all-star in year two, averaging 24.8 points, 9.8 rebounds, and 3.6 assists, and 1.8 steals, and 2.1 blocks. Super efficient as well. I do wonder if he's in possibly the MVP race at the moment. He is number four in the NBA in his second season. I'm not even seeing that from Wimbanyama. Carl Anthony Towns is currently on the Warriors. Wow, Demar looks pretty good. And I passed up on him to take Zachary Satcher. Obviously, we ended up with flag, so it wasn't the end of the world. Jalen Dern, third in most improved. Oh, yeah, for sure. His rebounds have gone up five a night. His points have doubled. That makes total sense. We are currently 23 games above 500 at 36 in, tw in 13. Um, Cooper Flag is averaging 24.8. Emmanuel quickly 20 and a half points, 6.2 assists, 4.4 rebounds. Mikhail Bridges is averaging 20 points tonight on really solid efficiency. Buddy Heald is giving me a weak three point shooting. Isaiah Joe just hasn't really been a good outlaw. And I just found out that like the outlaws are like their arena football team or their XFL football team. It's some like random football team. I think it might be arena football out there. So that's where this name came from. And I feel like I've also been using this expansion name for like the last like four 2K cycles. Just because I'm like, you know what? It actually sounds pretty good. And it's like, I don't know if they're going to make it something that's like gambling related. I hope not. Because you could definitely make it something like desert related too. That would be pretty cool. So we're at the deadline. I guess I should try to look to move Isaiah Joe. And yeah, we're going to do this trade with the Sacramento Kings. I'm giving them Isaiah Joe and Peyton Pritchard. I really wanted Pritchard to work out, but he was just not great for us. He had two solid years, but then this year it's kind of back to what it's been. Isaiah Joe, good three-point shooter. We're going to get Nikola Topic, who is a free agent soon. He's the former 30 sec uh, 37th overall selection. Well, I with expansion teams he was 39th and we get a second rounder so he's gonna just basically be our backup point guard and i think like yeah we're gonna start buddy healed like we do have josh richardson on this team we might have to play like daryl holmes and alejandro ortiz just because now i want to see them over like josh richardson so if i gave them each 13 minutes a night we did 15 to brown um 20 to toe pitch we'll do 20 two to Looney. That's good with me. And then we can give more minutes to Buddy Healed. I don't know why Emmanuel quickly is not getting that many. Um, so we should be good to go now. System proficiency is three-star balance under Jake Thomas. Let's see if we could possibly get a top seed in the West at the end of the regular season. So Emmanuel quickly is due for an extension. So we're going to get him locked up on three more years after uh, this year. So he's basically under contract till he's 32, five more years. Just wanted to bring him back. I loved how he's been for us. And I'm really glad I chose him over Markel Fultz. So Shea Gilchrist Alexander wins MVP. Those are not MVP numbers. 21.8 points. 4.3 rebounds, 8.2 assists. I mean, an insane efficiency season, but like, I feel like there's got to be other people that could have won MVP, like Cooper Flagg. So, um, you got a Damar getting six man of the year. He also gets most improved, not Jalen Duran. Mark Dagno of the Thunder. They go 66 and 16. I'm sure they're the one seed. He is your coach of the year. Cooper Flagg, all NBA second team in year two. 60% true shooting. Great scoring season, just offensive season overall from him. And he's also on all defensive second team as well. So, we are the two seed here in the Western Conference, taking on the seven seeded Minnesota Timberwolves. You got Luka Doncic, Anthony Edwards, huh, Jada McDaniels, Jago Ravia, Daniel Gafford. It's just like that backcourt of Luka and Ant is going to be so tough to beat. Here were the numbers. Uh, Bridges did fall below 20 points per game, but I like the team we got. I think Alejandro Ortiz will probably get minutes over Darrell Holmes in the playoffs. So I think Holmes, uh, yeah, is going to get zero minutes. We're going to go 10 to Ortiz. Shout out to Kobe Brown. I did not think I was going to be playing him, but he's actually been pretty solid for us. I think Looney can get like 18 minutes a night. Topic can get like 22. Let's go 35 to Duran, 37 to Flag, 37 to Bridges, 37 to Quickly, and then we can do 29 to Buddy Heald. We're taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves, like I mentioned. Game one, we do end up winning by 22 points. Quickly had 22. Flag had 20 rebounds and four blocks. Shot the ball horribly, but we still won. We lose game two by 18. No, I can't do math. 28. 28. And then we lose game three 
by 21. Quickly with 27, Bridges 18, Flag 18. Oh, no. Don't lose game number four, please. Okay, we stay alive. We end up winning by 13. Buddy healed Bridges, Dern, and Topic all had 22 apiece. And then Cooper Flag had 21. Huge rubber match here. Game five, we take it. That is so massive. Don't lose two in a row. Please don't lose two in a row. Yes, we advance. We lost game six by 13 points. All right, kind of a gross one. We had a um, we had healed fell out. We had flag almost fell out. And then game seven, we won by 15 on the backs of Emmanuel quickly. All right, he shot the ball horribly though in round one. Yeah, like who showed up? Like flag didn't play all that well. Quickly didn't play well. Bridges was fine. Dern was okay. Topic was solid. Buddy healed stunk. I might even start like Topic now. You know what? I may actually do that because I feel like Topic is better than Buddy healed. So what we're gonna do? I think we're going to make Topic the point guard and quickly the shooting guard. Something he really hasn't been for us. So, Heald's going to get like 18 minutes a night. And let's go 33 to Topic. Yeah, I just think he's that much better than Buddy Heald. So, here we go. We're taking on the Portland Trailblazers who still have Scoot, Sharp. They have Cam Whitmore now, Time Ward, Aiden, Simons, Proctor, uh, Jabari Walker, and Jeremy Grant off the bench. Game one, we do end up winning by 17 points. Mikel with 24. Oh, my God. Nikola Topic with a triple-double. 23, 13, and 15. All right. Well, I'm glad I inserted him into the starting lineup. We end up winning by one. We almost bowed in the fourth quarter, but we have a chance to go up three games to zero. That does not happen because we ended up losing by nine and now game where Flag had 28. Man, Flag has been struggling in the playoffs so far, but we do take a three to one lead. He drops 23 and 12. Bridges with 21. Topic with 20 and 11. Quickly also been struggling in the playoffs. But hey, we're one game away from the conference finals. If we just advance to the conference finals with a lot of these guys struggling, but Duran, Flag, and Quickly all have solid games there. And we're taking on the one seeded Thunder. Who have a very good team. Oh my god, their lineup is filled with young studs. And they also have Cameron Boozer off the bench as well. Game number one, we end up winning by five. Chet with 23. Quickly with 21 though. Uh, Topic with 16, 11, and 13. Darren with 15 and 13. Game number two, we end up losing this one by three. Damn. Quickly had 30 in this one. Flag had 27 and 10. Do we go down 2 to 1? No, we go up 2 to 1. Let's go. We end up winning by 10 quickly with 38. Topic with 17 and 10. Bridges with 16. Shea had 27 and 11. Game number 4, we end up losing by 3. Duran had a double double. Same with Flag. Same with Topic. Don't go down 3. Okay, let's go. We're up 3 to 2. Come on. We just have to win one out of these next two and we can go to the NBA Finals. No! Oh, man. Flag at 37 and 11. But here we go. Game seven of the conference finals. We were up three games to two. Can we win this? Ugh, Vegas versus OKC. We're down by a little bit right now. Can we flirt back in the third? There we go. We come back in the third. Come on. Come on. Don't lose. Please, please don't lose. All right. You have a 10-point lead with seven and a half minutes left. Don't blow it. Let's go. We're going to advance to the NBA Finals. Cooper Flagg is your Western Conference Finals MVP. Scotty Barnes is your Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Let's freaking go. What a performance by Cooper Flagg. And here we are in the NBA Finals to take on the three-seeded Raptors, who have a good team. They got Fred Van Vliet back. But I honestly think... I mean, they have a good bench, but I do think that Thunder team is better. All right, here we go. Game one against the Raptors. They end up winning by six points. Quickly had 27, Bridges 23. All right, all right. Sadiq Bey had 30 off the bench because of course he did. We do win game two though by one point. Oh my God, one point away from being down 2-0. I don't like that. We do go down 3-2-1. Uh, they win by two. Oh man, okay. All right, they want a close one there. Game four goes to us. We end up winning by 18. Flag with 26, quickly with 16. Don't go down three to two, please. Don't go down three to two. You had one job and we lost by four. Our last two L's have been by two and by four. So now we got to go on the road from Vegas to Canada. Yeah, because I think the previous game was in Vegas and we got to win on the road after traveling. But it looks like we're not jack lagged. We're going to blow them out by 25 points. Quickly with 28, Darren with 20. All right. And this is what we dream of. Game seven of the NBA Finals on our home floor in Vegas. Can we win? Just don't get blown out. That's all I care about. And we're doing the blowing out right now. We're up by 27. <laughs> all right. All right. Just don't choke this, please. Please. You're choking it a little bit. Just a tad bit. Oh my God. We're up by 15. All right. Don't blow this, please. We're up by 21. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Let's go. Man, I was getting a little bit nervous there that we were going to blow that. Jalen Duran's got, oh, I was going to say 19 and 13, but he missed the free throw. So yeah, Cooper Flag 21 and six in this game. Bridges has 17. Of course, got that uh, insane perimeter defense. Topic with 13 assists. Quickly, he's got 19 points. He honestly is better suited as like a combo guard too, where he's still score first, but he is still a solid passer. Don't get me wrong, but I think like Topic definitely excels 
fouls there. That was a dumb pass by me. Ah, oh, nigga Bay kicking it out to Stefan Castle. Who's going to knock that down? All right, 18 point game. All right, let's see how Cooper Flag is coming off some screens. Can we get him open? Uh, just terrible ball handling by Nikola Topic. He's also tired as well. All right, kick that out to Topic. We'll do a pick and pop with the two. We should be able to get him open. Swing it over to Bridges. All right, they are just playing insane D right now. Bridges inside. Kick that over to Jalen Duran, who's got Patrick Williams on him. This actually is a mismatch. And, oh. Shot clock violation. I'm an idiot. Thought that was an and one. Pascal Siakam, spin boy in the paint. He's going to kick it out to Scotty Barnes. No way he hits that. Great contest by Bridges. Bridges is cherry picking up the floor. Can we get Bridges spin move? Oh, no. I tried spin moving, but he's going to get fouled by Stefan Castle. Bridges is going to get his 18th point of the night. Come on, let's make it 19. And this is, yeah, this is going to be the neutral floor for the uh, in-season tournament. Well, not on this one exactly, but in Vegas um, for the semifinals and the finals. So that's going to be very exciting. All right, Duran guarded by Sadiq Bey. This should be an automatic poster. There it is. Back down Punisher. He's got 20 and 14 as we're now up by 19. And yeah, the Las Vegas Outlaws are going to win the 2027 NBA championship. I honestly don't know who's going to get finals MVP because it could randomly be like Nikola Topic, um, who you can see his stats on the bottom there. I don't know if that's like a hint that he's going to get finals MVP. I could be a Jalen Duran. It could be quickly um, or Bridges. I will put my money on Cooper Flag though, just because he had some really solid solid performances i think he had like a really good game six performance right so yeah i think he is going to get it and shout out to jake thomas getting me a championship as our head coach i didn't even have to move on from the expansion head coach he's so much better than milan mack i don't even know who that is holding up the trophy honestly that's nikola topic i don't know if that's like alejandro ortiz or whoever there's cooper flag who i feel like is going to be finals mvps if he's off to the side there and yep he is going to be presented finals MVP? Who is that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Daryl Holmes, not Ortiz. Wait, Daryl Holmes is the finals MVP? <laughs> no way. No way. Is he handing it off to Cooper Flag or someone? Or is he handing it off to Duran? What is he doing? This guy didn't play in the finals. He's not in finals MVP. What? 2K's championship celebration is so glitched out because sometimes there's also like the other team celebrating with you. Um, It does go to Cooper Flag, but for some reason, the guy that played zero minutes in the finals is holding the trophy. Flag had great efficiency, 21, 9, 4, 1 and a half, and 3. So I hope you guys did enjoy this Vegas expansion rebuild. Let me know if you did by dropping a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which expansion city we should do next. We've done Seattle in 2K24. We've done Vancouver. We've now done Las Vegas. Let me know. Do you want to see Vancouver? You want to see Nashville? Do you want to see Mexico City? Something cool like that. Let me know in the comments below. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.